Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, we're going to talk about one of my absolute favorite conifers. This is a, a Japanese cedar, otherwise known as Cryptomeria japonica. Uh, this plant comes in all shapes and sizes, and you're going to see that in this video. Um, Yoshino Cryptomeria, which is probably the most widely sold uh, large growing Cryptomeria, gets 70 feet tall uh, plus, and I've seen them just absolutely gigantic. Uh, all over the place. Uh, they're great screening plants until they're not, and we'll see that in this video. They kind of thin at the bottom over some period of time, and you can see right through the bottom of them, but initially they do make fantastic screening plants. But this plant has been worked on a lot, and there are a lot of named, uh, a lot of named varieties out there. This one is called Dragon Prince, and it's one of the first plants that went into our landscape project here in Raleigh, North Carolina. You can see this incredible compact habit a uh, really kind of soft to the touch. You know, we'll see that throughout this video uh, of all the varieties we're gonna see. We have little bitty tiny miniature ones. I'll show you one in just a minute. Then perfect little round globes like this, kind of pyramidal small dwarf varieties, and then upright narrow ones, and then very, very, very large uh, cryptomeria. They're incredibly drought tolerant once they're established. The smaller ones like this play really, really nice with other companion plants without any problem. The very, very large ones uh, can dominate a space, and we'll see that in this video uh, as well. You have a, it's really, um, there's some of them have some interesting foliage colors as they're, as they're leafing out in the spring and they're actively growing, while others are just a, a really rich dark green color. In colder areas, they will bronze a bit uh, in the winter time. We rarely get that cold. Most of the time they're gonna stay pretty green here in our Raleigh, North Carolina zone 8A area. Again, soft to the touch and they will continue to grow. Most of the growth on these are gonna happen in the spring and in the fall during cooler months. In the summer, they're evergreen for sure, but they won't, you'll notice they don't do a whole lot of growing uh, in the absolute heat of the summer. But let's look around at a bunch of them. Over here at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum, this is Cryptomeria japonica limeade. This one's pretty exciting. I got this one in a rare plant auction a few years ago. I'm actually not sure how many of these actually exist. Really, really interesting one. The new growth on it uh, has this kind of a, a lighter gold color on it. We have this one next to the fence uh, at the house and it's reached, it's probably near double the height of this one that's planted outside the Ralston here. I think we'll run into lemonade in here as well, but really nice compact habit. Again, pretty soft to the touch. Uh, very, very interesting plant in the winter garden here at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. Here's an incredibly compact uh, cryptomeria. This one is right about five feet in height, maybe four to five feet in width. Keep in mind, none of these are gonna stop growing. So even the very smallest one I have at the house uh, over some period of time, it's gonna to continue to creep up. So I would say that this is gonna be one that's maintainable between three and five feet, something like that. But you can see, it's not, you know, nothing's gonna really stop it from growing. It may slow down a bit as it gets get some size on it. Uh, but this was so full, and again, it's inviting. You know, this is a thing with cryptomeria that's a little different than some other conifers. You will see a little bit of an amber hue on these in the, in the, in colder, as the winter gets colder. Here in zone 8A where we are, you don't you get a lot less of it if you definitely move these into slightly colder areas. You're gonna get more of that ambering on most cryptomeria varieties. But this one, incredible, incredibly dense plant. They're not pruning anything out here. So this is how this plant has grown and uh, how it's matured in this space. And it's in a very dry, this is a, uh, another wild thing about this this is actually in a raised bed and it's in a garden that is meant to for a lot of southwestern plants uh, and uh, south african plants and australian plants to reside in the garden here and they pop this cryptomeria in and it's thriving amongst agave and other incredibly drought tolerant things so i showed you limeade uh, out at the entryway to the ralston arboretum and this is lemonade uh, and again it has this kind of a yellowish hue to it especially when it's actively growing this time of year in early january it's got this little bit of bronzing uh, in it but not a whole lot i like i really like these two most of these cryptomeria i'm going to show you are limbed all the way to the bottom most of the shrubbier ones are limbed all the way to the bottom these tend to lift up 
uh, the bottom just a little bit and have allowed you know there's an agave planted under this one again super dry space these are planted in this is not an area that's getting irrigated it's intentionally planted uh, with things that they did not want water on they've elevated them there's gravel it's basically planted in a gravel garden and this thing is absolutely thriving in it uh, the height could be kept down on it i think this one's maybe up to about eight feet in height so if you wanted to keep something like this a little more shrubby uh, you could uh, but this is limeade Really, one of the things I want you to get out of this video is all the different shapes and sizes of these cryptomeria. So we can have 75 foot tall Yoshino cryptomeria that are incredible screening plants and down to you know little dwarf ones. Somewhere in between is this uh, cryptomeria japonica pom pom. Uh, what a plant this is. Uh, again, so soft to the touch. It has this narrow upright habit. You know, again, there's not much pruning going on here. Uh, if you get a crazy limb out on the side of it, we could definitely cut that limb off if it was getting a little wider uh, than we wanted. What you'll notice here on a kind of a mild, the, a lot of the growth that will happen on these will be spring and fall, okay? Uh, because we really haven't had any cold to shut it down, they're still putting on a little bit of growth. I think this is what happened over in Tennessee last year. A lot of these were actually damaged or even killed uh, on the Tennessee side of the mountains and they just had not shut themselves down. We prefer to just kind of go, we went from 60 degrees went, you know, in an afternoon to 13 here and even colder over there on the Tennessee side and these things were still actively growing just like they are uh, right now. So we prefer to have gotten a little more cold on them at this point, but it's kept it looking really beautiful with all this new growth you know, throughout the, throughout the plant. But this one is pom-pom. I think when I looked on the Ralston uh, website there were like 60 cryptomeria in this garden so I, I won't you know not going to make a video with 60 of them uh, to try to get all I'm really trying to do is just show you all the different you know all the different kind of growth habits this one's called butterball another one that's very upright uh, again super soft to the touch still growing uh, here in January <laughs> like probably like to have it shut down a bit at this point and turn that little more amber amber coloration Really like this one. It's super, super full. And again, it's you know not being not being pruned on over here. It's a bit shadowy out here right now, so I'm hoping you'll be able to see this one. It's, this one's called uh, Ed Woods. A uh, really interesting variety. A lot of these conifers, these named varieties of conifers, they start off as witches brooms on larger plants. And so you may go past a Yoshino cryptomeria, which is one of the big, you know, giant, large growing ones and see a little cluster of foliage on the side of it, just growing kind of weird, okay? Um, those, are, those are brooms. We take those off and hopefully get them rooted, and then you end up with these kind of contorted, strange growing uh, cryptomeria. They can try to grow out of that in time. So this one, I think, is meant to just kind of be kept as this strange little contorted plant, but you can see up here at the top, in all likelihood, it's just kind of reverting back to, you know, its original, you know, the original plant that it came off of. So if I see something like this on one of my little really weird contorted, you know, conifers, uh, that it, where it just pops up some vertical growth all of a sudden, it may be best just to go down here and take that off, you know, get that cut back into the plant so you can keep this kind of strange kind of alien habit that this one has. Here's a newly planted little dwarf one called Kitakami. I actually don't know, not familiar with this one. There's so many named, there's so many that are named out there, but you can see a little little dwarf round habit. And while they're this small, you can kind of keep them, you know, this size and shape. That's a great candidate for going in a container too. You could grow that thing in a container for a few years and then, you know, plant it out in the landscape and let it get bigger, you know, once it's outsized, uh, you know, bigger than the container uh, that you have it in. Um, this one is called uh, Magic Dragon. Uh, there is black dragon cryptomeria, so I don't know if this one was, you know, uh, some sort of sport, you know, off a of black dragon, but you can see it has this mounding habit, really soft uh, to the touch on this one, and they all are, they're all, you know, where, you know, you see me doing this on basically every one of them, because, you know, I'm so used to conifers, you know, being prickly or, or whatever, but the crypto, crypt cryptomeria are different. I don't know how long this one's been in the ground, it's got some decent size on them. This one is definitely a candidate uh, to be bonsai, a hundred percent. It's got very interesting, very interesting interior habit on it. So that that's a possibility. I haven't 
pointed out at all in this is once you get some size on these cryptomeria, they do have very interesting bark as well. Some of them, some reddish hues will show up in the bark on like Yoshino, uh, some of them a little bit grayer, but really neat, interesting kind of peeling uh, bark on them. So as they mature and start to thin maybe in a spot here or there, it's not all that important um, because the, you know, the, they also have interesting interior uh, parts as well. Regular Cryptomeria japonica or Japanese cedar um, get massive. So there's one here at the Ralston called Benjamin Franklin. It's probably 40 feet tall behind the camera. Uh, there's another one over here. I don't know the, I haven't looked at the uh, name on it, but you can see they just, they become trees uh, over time. This one is Cryptomeria japonica uh, variety sinensis. So this one's a Chinese cedar. So this is the uh, you know, the cryptomeria from the, you know, from the Chinese mainland instead of, you know, instead, instead of Japan. But you can see same thing where it starts to pick up as we age here, you start to get this bark that kind of flakes off and it develops these red um, hues to them. And, you know, of course you're growing some, um, some other, other living creatures are on there too, staining it with these green colors. Uh, absolutely beautiful trunk and they'll limb themselves up in time i had a yoshino cryptomeria at the old house and you know before i left i think i showed it a few times there it was taller than my two-story garage uh, you know it popped up you could see it over the house from my two-story garage so i think at that point it was you know over 40 feet in height or something when i left and it was right at 20 years old uh, at that time very significant root system so this is a tree you know if you're going to plant one of the large cryptomerias plan on being able to do very little below them. They will start to drop off as they shade themselves out from the bottom and they limb themselves up into trees like this. They will coat the ground and material falling off of it. So you have, it's self-mulching, self-maintaining, incredibly drought tolerant, but you will not grow other, many other things under them. There's a few camellias planted in this space in this kind of grove of cryptomeria. Uh, literally, we're standing in a grove of cryptomeria. This camellia has done okay because camellias are really drought tolerant once they're established, but they were probably planted roughly the same time. I think you'd be, have a hard time coming in here with this very large, um, you know, if you were planting a small, small little plants in and amongst these, I think they'd have a tough time uh, competing. So if you're planning on under planting them, plant them at the same time. Otherwise you're gonna have to irrigate a whole lot to establish something near them because they're a bit greedy uh, in time. But truly, truly spectacular trees in the landscape. This one is called Giacomo, and it is right around 25 feet in height, and it's incredibly full. Uh, most of these are kind of have a more, the ones that get this kind of size on them will be kind of layered uh, as they go up. This one has kept kind of a shrub form, but it's 25 feet tall. Great screening plant, but again, I want to point out, uh, you know, once again, underneath here, they're eventually going to shade themselves out and thin down here at the bottom. So, you know, this is, a, this is the case a lot of times with large growing conifers. It doesn't matter if it's Leyland cypress or green giant arborvita or what it is. These conifers eventually shade themselves out down at the bottom and become thin. Uh, so they need to be, something else will eventually need to be under planting it if you're trying to use it as a screen because it's a very effective screen if I was 15 feet tall, <laughs> but being six feet tall, you can see right through it. So that will happen in time if you're using conifers as screening plants. Whereas like leafy evergreen plants, I could simply cut the top of it off and it would regenerate some foliage down here in the bottom. Came over to the NC State campus to see if I could find really large uh, cryptomeria and I haven't found one yet, still hoping for it, but we did find black dragon cryptomeria. Uh, this one tends to grow, it's upright and narrow, tends to have a slightly looser form uh, than some others. Uh, I really, it's a lot of growers grow this one a lot of growers grow this one so black dragon's pretty pretty readily available again it'll have a kind of a looser you know overall look to it but it's always upright and narrow like this so it fits a lot of garden spaces uh, and here they are these giant uh, giant planters here so you have a salad bowl right down below them. so as you can see from our visit over to the ralston just how many shapes and sizes uh, these cryptomeria come in uh, the smallest one we have is called twinkle toes I think this one is, this one was bought in a little quart pot. This is one of uh, uh, 
uh, Isley's plants that uh, we have in our garden here in Raleigh. We were out there on the West Coast and saw their incredible garden. If you haven't seen those videos, um, uh, they're definitely worth a watch. That is one of the most beautiful gardens in America for sure. But their, their plants typically are available around the Christmas season in most of the garden centers. And you can buy little quart pots uh, and then put them in containers. These cryptomeria make fantastic container plants. And we have three right here. A lot of our container plants went into, we planted them in the ground for the winter time. So that's what this collection of things is right here. And we're going to reuse them in containers or other things this next spring. But it prevents us from having to worry about the roots freezing solid on them during the uh, winter time. But this uh, Twinkle Toes Cryptomeria has been, I think, with us for over two years in a container, and that's all it's grown. It could, we can put this in a slightly larger container for another two years, uh, then eventually in the ground. Again, there's no off switch on these things. This is a very dwarven Cryptomeria, and it can be kept a foot tall. But if I never, ever, ever prune it, it's definitely going to continue to just add a little bit of size uh, over time. But a uh, little bit of frost on it this morning, a little bit of uh, that amber uh, bronzing showing up in it. Great, great looking plant. We have another one here we got from, uh, actually that one came from Pat McCracken, who is the uh, uh, Sunshine Ligustrum and Stella Ruby Magnolia uh, inventor, or um, the person who introduced those two plants. Uh, again, there's frost on this one, but look how compact uh, this one is uh, it's just absolutely incredible uh, you can't and again you can't stop touching these things we'll finish up the video where we started uh, over here this is another dragon prince cryptomeria and i want to point out something about the first one we saw over there i let a grapevine grow on that thing i let a rose grow on that thing and i let a rosemary grow on that thing for like a year and a half uh and we pulled all those things off this year, got it clean, got that area cleaned up, uh, got everything under control, and that plant looked absolutely fantastic underneath it. I was just amazed that I had not done more damage to it uh, by having it covered up. Don't recommend that <laughs> at all. But uh, these these cryptomeria are all hardy. I haven't said through the whole video in zone six to nine. Uh, again, they just come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, pretty industrial ornamental plants. Uh, I, I, I highly recommend if you have a low foundation that you can find something like this Dragon Prince Cryptomeria uh, to put as your, you know, the kind of the row in the back that stays the same year round. Okay, it's not prickly. It's easy to clean up around it. It's easy to mulch around it. It's, you know, it's, it's a plant. It's a great ornamental plant and just kind of all, all facets. So there you go. There's some examples of Japanese cedars. Uh, and their usefulness and their non-invasiveness uh, in our landscapes. Thanks for watching.